This is the set error logging script step. Be sure to check out the description for links to all of the new feature videos and the free course at Productive Computing University for all the videos in one place. This is definitely going to be one of your favorites. Basically, it automatically creates error logging for scripts. It creates a file with some error details. It is kind of customizable. It's only for the client, not for server script schedules or perform script on server. So let's see how this works. I've created a simple script. We have set error logging and we have set error capture. These are different. Hopefully you know what set error capture is by now. We look at the details here. It says it controls whether errors are logged while the current file scripts are running. So let's try this out. I have currently it set off. So we have a toggle switch here, and then we have a gear box, which is just a calculation dialog box returning text. So we'll just run it with both of these off at the moment, just to see what it will do. We'll save our changes and we have errors showing up i specifically put two in here that are doing nothing so we have those errors and it doesn't appear that really anything else happened because it talked about creating a file we'll just look in finder in the documents folder here i only have one other document folder here. So we'll see what happens when we make some changes to our script. We're just going to turn this on. We'll even leave that off for now. We'll save that and let's do the debugger. Didn't see anything different. We still have those errors showing up. So let's check finder and see what happened. And here we have a new file. We have script errors log, which kind of looks like a mess here, but let's open it with a text editor and see what the file looks like. And we'll widen this out. That looks a little better. We have a timestamp, it appears. We have the name of the file. This would be the account or username. And this is the name of the script with a number there. And then we have the script steps with numbers nine and 11. I'm going to guess those are the number in the actual script. And then we have the error codes and we have this extra thing over here. So this is very interesting. We'll look at nine 11 and see what we can find in our script. And sure enough, there's nine and there's 11. So let's change things up a little bit. We will disable that one. We'll go ahead and turn error capture on just to see if that makes a difference. And since we have this dialog box, we're just going to throw in some text and see what happens in our script. And we will debug this again. We'll go through. We still get the errors. Again, it appears there wasn't any major difference. So let's look at the script errors log. And it looks like we have additional information now. We still have the two that we had before. But now we have these other two with our nice little helpful text, which is not very helpful, but um, it does show that there is text here. So I thought we should make it just a little bit more interesting and that we might as well make it actually helpful. So in the calc dialog box, I just use an execute SQL statement and added a few other things here, layout, view, record ID, platform, version, all of this, you, you have a lot of control over what you can do. Now here is where this execute SQL can be extremely helpful. And if you saw the actual import section, which will just go to our little error dialog part here. Over in this table, we imported all the error codes and the details. So there's 252 records. So you could make a case statement in that custom dialog box and really 
go through and say, if it's this one, then return this. If it's this, return this. But I thought, why not just have this table and use an execute SQL statement, and then we will get more information. And I also added an import for the error log. So if we look at the import script errors, I just have the documents path, the name of the file, and already set the import order, of course, with our new amazing custom dialog box and I'm matching these timestamp and a file name and account name uh, and updating because chances are you're not going to have the exact same timestamp with file name and account name. So we can always have this running list of errors in our table. So we'll go ahead and import that and see what it looks like so far. And it just shows it a little bit better. We have the timestamp, of course. We've got the DB session number is what that is. We have a file name, account name, script name, and the index of the script. The script step name with the line number, the error code, and then the error note. So now we made that change. Let's go back to our script here and I just put it all in this button. I don't think we have to do the script debugger because it is gonna be the same each time. We've kind of verified all of that. So we're just gonna run this script in this button here and you can see it doesn't appear that anything happened but let's just import the file now and we get a lot more details. We have the actual error code here, but it didn't quite turn out the way we expected. We got to the layout and what view it was, the record ID, the platform, the version. However, because we used carriage returns in the import process, it's actually creating these other records. So instead, We'll just do the same thing, but we're using commas and a space instead. And we'll save that. And let's just run this again. There was maybe an error, we'll see. So we have our import. And if we scroll down, there is what we are looking for with the information the way we want. And let's even take a look at it in the actual file and see what it looks like. And as you can see, you can really get some good information here and you just play with it a little bit to know exactly what you want. Maybe even want to use tabs instead of commas so that when it's imported, each of these are fields. And so I actually decided to clean it up a little bit for this sample file and I'm using the care nine, which is the tab key and that will help separate these and then just added a little bit more information. So it was more understanding and you don't have to look up things. So now when we run this script causing the errors and then we import this, we have some information and I created an additional layout so that we could look and see by adding a few more fields that would delineate exactly what information we're getting. Now we have, instead of just this block here, which is what is standard in the script error logging, now we have all of this additional information. As you can see, you can get as creative as you like. There is one other thing to note about this particular script step, and that is you need full access. So if we actually go in and re-log in with less access. And I'll just show you, we have a different account set up with limited access to records, layouts, value lists, and scripts. So we can see what that could look like. So let's re-log in. And now let's run this same script that should be generating an error. And we'll even go back to list mode here and now we'll import and it is not showing anything. So we'll run that again, import, and it doesn't seem to be working. So let's just go back to the full access account 
and we'll run that script and we'll click import and you can see that these are the two that just happened. So the other ones did not work because that account did not have full access. But what if we grant full access to that specific script? Will that make a change in whether it generates an error or not? So we're back in that account, we'll run that script, we'll do the import process, and we have two additional ones with that new account. Those are the fundamentals of the new set error logging script step. How will you use this in your solutions? What kind of creative ideas can you have that will be customizable or just take this that extra step? You may get even more ideas when you see the new file script steps. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget to check out the description for links to other new feature videos for FileMaker 18 and the free course at Productive Computing University for all of the videos in one place, as well as other courses to enhance your skills as a FileMaker developer.